So that's how we can get our um, acyl chlorides to be uh, converted to another derivative. If we wanted to do a conversion of a acyl chlorides in such like a reduction reaction, a reduction reaction would substitute the acyl chloride for a hydrogen or a carbon group. We're gonna go through those now. Um, the two, uh, three main ways, excuse me, three main ways to do that. Uh, lithium aluminum hydride will take an acyl chloride and make it an alcohol. We're gonna go through that. It makes it a primary alcohol because lithium aluminum hydride is so reactive. Again, lithium would be a plus charge. Aluminum holds a minus charge. And for hydrogens, hydride comes, attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, makes the tetrahedral intermediate. We first do a substitution reaction. Oxygen would roll its electrons back down to make an aldehyde. Cl minus is an excellent leaving group, just like we saw in the previous four reactions. Lithium aluminum hydride cannot stop reacting though. So a second equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride reacts just like what we saw in chapter 19 to an aldehyde, it will add forming that tetrahedral intermediate. And that's when we move on to the last step, the water or the acid workup, oxygen can get protonated and form our primary alcohol. If you wanted to stop short at the aldehyde, we cannot use lithium aluminum hydride. You cannot stop here because lithium aluminum hydride is such a strong reducing agent. If you wanted to use a weaker reducing agent to stop at the aldehyde, the best choice is going to be a lithium tri butoxy aluminum hydride. That is a mouthful it is a lithium aluminum hydride reagent with simply three um, oxygen ether groups and one hydrogen. What that does is it reduces the reactivity and therefore stops the reaction at the aldehyde. Helpful. Mechanistically, the exact same as the very first step, just stops at the aldehyde. Last one that I wanna go over, how do acyl chlorides react with Grignard reagents? If we have a Grignard reagent, again, what is going to be happening here in this reaction? Um, again, we should see our Grignard reagent up at the top, followed by a water workup. Typically for that Grignard reagent, we see excess, right? excess, not extra small, excess. It's just an abbreviation um, often used by organic chemists not extra small, it's not a t-shirt size, it means XS. Just say it really fast. Um, and what happens is we do form alcohols and we add two equivalents of Grignard reagent to our final product. Let's go through that mechanism. Again, a Grignard is going to be a carbon nucleophile. Carbon will add onto the carbon of the carbonyl forming that tetrahedral intermediate. The first product is going to be that of a ketone. Once the chlorine is substituted. Nice. Can't stop, won't stop. 
We'll add a second equivalent of our Grignard from what we know from chapter 19. Ketones react with Grignards. And then we'll do our water or our acid workup to protonate our alcohol. So we end up making um, tertiary alcohols with this Grignard reagent. So just in summary, um, we see a ver variety of reagents here. The only uh, reagent that we're going to hold off on is the cuprate. Cuprates we will talk about a little bit later in chapter 21. Um, cuprates are weaker organometallic reagents. Um, and so no mechanism for that yet, but a cuprate um, is something that will react similar to a Grignard. It is a carbon nucleophile. Um, but it stops at aldehydes and ketones. They do not react with aldehydes or ketones. So they can react once and do a substitution reaction, um, but they do not continue to do the addition reaction. Very, very similar to the use of uh, the lithium derivative that is the more mild hydride reagent. This is the mild hydride reagent. This is our mild carbon or carbanion reagent. All right, preparation of anhydrides. Now, anhydrides can be synthesized by excessive heat of the carboxylic acid. This only works for acetic acid though. So uh, it's not something that you would most likely see on an exam. What we wanna be able to think about is for our reactions of anhydrides, what can we actually do? Well, we can take an anhydride through a couple of different reactions. Um, we are only going to show two. Now that is primarily because when we think about, um, or I guess there's three because the oxygen, um, there's gonna be three. Uh, when we think about acid, Chlorides, acid chlorides can become anhydrides, but anhydrides cannot go backwards to become acyl chlorides. So here's an example. We'll just get rid of our groups for now. Let's have a very simple acid anhydride that is symmetrical. We can use water and we will form the carboxylic acid. Let's go ahead and walk through the mechanism. Oxygen attacks one of the carbons of the carbonyl. Doesn't matter which one, choose one, they're the same. We would always keep symmetry in this reaction. So either will work. All right, now we're gonna use the second equivalent of water to be a proton transfer reagent. And that proton transfer is going to, that proton transfer is going to take the proton away from what was the nucleophile and give it to the oxygen sandwiched in the anhydride. Most likely this does not occur via an intramolecular proton transfer simply because uh, these carb these oxygens are too close to do an intramolecular reaction. So we use water as a sort of a funnel. Then our oxygen can kick out the two carboxylic acids, right? We have one carboxylic acid here and the second carboxylic acid here. So even if the molecule is not symmetrical, you still get two carboxylic acids. If they were symmetrical, if the anhydride is symmetrical, then just uh, draw one, right? No repetition necessary. That same exact reaction mechanism can be done with alcohols as well. And what happens with the alcohol mechanism is we make an alcohol 
and a carboxylic acid gets kicked off as well. So carboxylic acids or esters can be produced just by throwing in that anhydride. Beautiful. Last one on this section of substitution, the anhydride can be reacted with an amine. Could be again, ammonia, a primary amine or a secondary amine and that will result in an amide. Let's do the mechanism. Nitrogen again, a base, attacks the carbon of the carbonyl. Kicks up the lone pair. I'm gonna hang off one proton this time just to be a little bit quicker. A second equivalent of the amine will come in and deprotonate. The nitrogen, so it's neutral. We do not on this reaction need to protonate uh, the oxygen because nitrogen uh, is more basic than oxygen. Nitrogen holds a positive charge better. Oxygen holds a negative charge better. So we kick out um, a carboxylate ion and we're left with the amide. Excellent. Now again, we can use lithium aluminum hydride in order to react with an ester and that would react the exact same way. So I'm just going to write that reaction here. And again, you can use a mild version to stop at the aldehyde. If you use lithium aluminum hydride, you are going to get two equivalents of hydrogen added. And so therefore you will get the primary alcohol. If you want to stop at the aldehyde, just like we did with the variant for the acyl chloride, the variant for um, our ester or our The variant for our anhydrides is the same. It's the lithium aluminum with our uh, three ether groups attached, followed by a water workup. And that will get us to stop at the aldehyde. We can also use Grignard reagents on our acid anhydrides. Just like before, a Grignard reagent would act twice to make primary alcohols and add two equivalents of that R group. Again, cuprates can react as well. So we can see those um, also add just one equivalent of R group. We'll talk about cuprates again more specifically in chapter 21. Uh, the only reaction that we are uh, kind of avoiding here that I didn't prim primarily talk about is this one. Uh, and that's because this is simply a deprotonation of a carboxylic acid with NaOH followed up with an acyl chloride reaction of a carboxylate ion. So we already did that one. Notice the repetition there um, and the preparation of our anhydrides. Reactions of anhydrides uh, can be used commercially, right? That's actually how we synthesize aspirin and Tylenol. Structures here, right? Making the ester or the amid, depending on which uh, choice. 
Okay, let's move on to esters. As we get further on our flow chart, as we get further down the list of reactivity, we saw the most reactions with, were with our acyl chlorides, quite a bit um, of reactions with our acid anhydrides, but a few less than the acyl chlorides. Reactions of esters um, are gonna have even less. We'll start with preparation of esters just as a review kind of idea, and then we'll get into their reactions. Um, esters can be prepared by an SN2 reaction the SN2 reaction with specifically the carboxylate ion. So again, in step number one here, NaOH is going to depropanate that carboxylic acid. And then we should be using a methyl halide or a primary alkyl halide. And that would undergo an SN2 reaction, which we have actually seen from chapter seven. All right, NaOH is used to deprotonate the carboxylic acid um, because again, the pKa's are favorable. Fischer esterification combines the carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Um, so using an acid catalyst, so we'd have to have acid conditions. Typically the acids that we would see over the reaction arrow would be H2SO4 or TSOH. You can also simply just write H plus. Uh, for this mechanism, you can use a protonated alcohol or you can use H3O plus just to be the proton transfer. We'll do that in the next slide, but notice here how um, the OH is going to be replaced with the ester, the O-N-E specifically in this example. So let's go ahead and walk through this. I'm showing uh, just as in the textbook, a protonated alcohol where we got that if we take methanol and we add it to a strong acid like H2SO4, the reaction product is a protonated alcohol, just like we would see um, H3O plus, right? It is an O plus here as well. Just one of those extra bonds is a carbon group, not a hydrogen. So that's what we're gonna show. All right. so protonate the carbon of, or the oxygen of the carbonyl, similar to what we had done before in the previous chapter. What does this do? It makes the carbon of the electrophile more electrophilic. Now our weak, at, uh, weak nucleophile here, methanol can come in and attack that carbon, kicking up a lone pair. That creates again, a new carbon oxygen bond and the tetrahedral intermediate. Now, a second equivalent of methanol will come in and deprotonate that nucleophile so that it is neutral. And then the oxygen of the carboxylic acid, OH, will get protonated. Again, do not do an intramolecular proton transfer. I know you're thinking, hey, Lauren, why can't we just go boop, boop, boop and grab that guy? Nope. That is too close. We do not see an intramolecular proton transfer occur unless there is five membered rings or six membered rings between the atoms. And this one would be four. So not gonna happen, too strained, not gonna be close enough together because closer those two atoms are to each other, uh, more steric hindrance. Okay, so we'll protonate that oxygen, which now becomes a leaving group roll the electrons back down, kick out water as the leaving group. And then in our final step, we will deprotonate the oxygen of the carbonyl. Now, again, same base nucleophilic attack and loss of leaving group that we've been doing, just a lot of extra peppered in proton transfers. So be very aware of these. The mechanism for Fischer sterification is supported by isotopic labeling. So there is a uh, great way to understand why this mechanism works. It's because there is a radio label of the alcohol that can be done. That radio label of the alcohol oxygen um, is then found on the resulting ester. All right, so think about isotopic labeling as um, creating a little tag on our methanol reagent and then seeing at the end of the day, where did that little tag go? Um, because the oxygen uh, is incorporated 
into the ester structure, that's how we have been able to prove uh, this mechanism and that water was kicked out, not uh, keeping the same oxygen. This oxygen right here becomes this oxygen right here. Um, Fisher's serification is an equilibrium process, so uh, water must be removed to favor the formation of the ester. What that means is that we can actually do the reverse process, um, take an ester and react it with, um, with H3O+, and you'll get a carboxylic acid. We'll see that in just a second. One way to go backwards is basic. Right, so the basic reaction is called saponification. Um, an acid workup is necessary to obtain the neutral uh, carboxylic acid because, again, um, after step number one, we have a carboxylate ion because of the acidity of um, a carboxylic acid in a basic solution, such as sodium hydroxide. Um, we would always have that little last proton transfer be necessary to put the proton back on there. Mechanistically, it's basic. So we'll just see nucleophilic attack and loss of leaving group. Because of the pKa's, that's where we'll see that last little proton transfer at the end. So base or nucleophile attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, kicking up a lone pair. And then this is the equilibrium process. Either oxygen is uh, fine to leave as a base. It is equilibrium. So expelling out uh, the alkoxide ion as the leaving group just promotes us to make something different. But it's this that is actually driving the reaction forward that alkoxide or hydroxide can come back and deprotonate um, that carboxylic acid because again, the pKa is around four to six and the pKa of the resulting alcohol is around 16. So definitely a very good reaction um, to continue forward, which is why we also need that extra little acid workup, right? H3O plus will take this guy in a subsequent step and pop that lovely proton back on. Acid cleanup step. You can also um, hydrolyze esters under acidic conditions. This is what I was hinting towards. The mechanism would be uh, the reverse of Fischer esterification, all right? Let's just walk through it relatively fast. Uh, the oxygen of the carbonyl is protonated, right? Then water is going to attack the carbon of the carbonyl. We can deprotonate that nucleophile so that it stays on. And then we will protonate the thing we want to kick out, which is our alcohol. And then we'll roll those electrons back down to kick out the methanol and use water or methanol to deprotonate. Beautiful. Those steps should be the exact opposite of what we were seeing. Um, previously. Reactions of esters, um, we can also undergo aminoolysis um, to form amides, right? So overall, the equilibrium does favor the amide. Amides are more stable, less reactive than esters. Um, so again, nitrogen is just a really good base, and so it's a really good nucleophile. Um, synthetic use is limited because this is very slow. It's more efficient to make an amide from an acyl chloride that we saw previously. A couple more that we wanna go through um, is the reductions of esters. An ester can be reduced with lithium aluminum hydride. So let's go through that one. I'll just use OME to show a very simple ester. Lithium aluminum hydride, same reaction as before, exact same with the hydride reacting and a substitution to make it uh, an aldehyde, and then subsequent addition to make two equivalents of hydride react to form a primary alcohol. So again, same exact reduction reaction that we saw in the previous sections with acid halides, um, we would do our um, 
substitution, right, to make the aldehyde, and then our addition to make the primary alcohol. Esters can also um, be stopped, just like we've seen before. They can be stopped with a less reactive reagent. That less reactive reagent is usually called Diba H or Dibol H. Sometimes there's an L in there. I'm gonna write that one up. Depending on what textbook you use, um, sometimes written like that, diisobutyl aluminum hydride. I'm gonna draw it right down here. Diisobutyl. Isobutyl is that group attached onto an aluminum. There's two of them, diisobutyl aluminum hydride. There's dibol H. So what is this guy good for? Well, he's less reactive as a reducing agent. So he gets to stop at the aldehyde. Grignard reagents can also react with our esters, same as before. We would see two equivalents of the Grignard reacting and a water workup. To add on two new R groups. This reaction and mechanism is the exact same as the acid chloride.